uh, what I'm going to do today is um, there's one more thing I want to talk about in the flag game. Um, <coughs> keep in mind the purpose um, of the examples isn't necessarily always to understand every detail of the example, but to understand the bigger general concepts, especially of the stuff that we haven't talked about before and haven't seen examples of. So for example, in the, you know, what is new about the flag game? Well, one thing that's new about it is that it uses fragments instead of not using fragments. Okay, that's, that's something to do. Second thing that's new is that it has a, um, if you're not in landscape mode, it has uh, a second activity that you go to. All right, so that's something new. And it did some animation, and that was a little bit new. Um, and it had a settings fragment, which is a little bit new. So it has some new things. Now there's some like really cool programming techniques that's done in it. Uh, that is that is going to lead to my injury. Is it? No, no. I don't apologize. Is there is there any way we can? Is that a plug-in over there or no? Right. No. Right. Right there uh, underneath the, the. Yeah. Is that? Yeah. No. It's out here. Okay. All right. Uh, I'll just be careful. It, someone yell if I'm about to trip. Okay. I'll let you know. Yeah. Let Let me know. <laughs> yeah. No. No. I mean that's okay. I mean you can tell these were done like in the old days, right? Because newer classrooms should have a lot more outlets than this. You know. Yeah. Why would you need an outlet in in 1980? You know. Uh, you know. Um, well, that's okay. He could do that. We just we just will be careful. Um, but yeah, there's some cool things programming-wise that go on uh, in it, and we'll take a look at that. Uh, but I do want to dwell on like the big picture items, all right, and not necessarily get caught up on on, on everything. Um, so let's start this off. And first of all, of the stuff that we've covered so far. What do you have questions over? What is the most confusing stuff of the stuff that we've gone over so far? Pardon me? Is it probably the recycler fee? That's fair. There's no recycler view in the flag quiz, though, fortunately. Okay, so uh, we can come back to the recycler view, but I want to go through this example. Uh, the fragments. Okay, the fragments. Okay. And, and where fragment has tools layout, and then they refer you to the layout for that fragment, that is a little bit confusing. Repeat the first part of that. Okay. Inside a fragment. Uh huh. sure if I can summarize that as a question. Okay. Um, let's take a look and see. Did I open the right, right one? I have a feeling I did not.
Okay. Um, so. It's in the landscape content main. Okay. The landscape content main. Let's let's look at the let's look at the activity main, the content main, and the landscape content main. All right, to sort of get an idea of what's going on here. Okay. Not much in activity main. Activity main is just sort of a shell. All right. Where we have our coordinator layout, which I don't really like. I don't know, my own biases. Um, has the app bar layout. All right, toolbar. All right, fair enough. And then we come to content main. What does the coordinator layout do? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. Okay. Let's, let's Google it. By specifying behaviors for child views, you can provide many different interactions within a single parent. Those views can interact with each other. Behaviors can use to implement. I think what you can do is you can position things. And it offers a different way of controlling the position. Coordinate layout is a new layout, superpowered frame layout, multiple children to a frame, they would overlap each other. The main appeal is the ability to coordinate the animations and transition of the views within it. Using XML, you can describe a layout where a FAB moves out of the way for an incoming snack bar, have another FAB, another view later. Okay. I guess my real question on that, does the is the coordinator, what is the portion of this that gives me that settings view? Okay. We'll, okay, we'll, we'll get to that. Okay. We'll get to that. Okay. We'll answer your first question first, and then we'll go to the second question. Okay. All right, so activity main. All right, has a content main. Content main is going to be one of these two people. All right, one of these two XML files. For smaller screens and portrait mode, you get this one. And all this contains is the fragment, uh, the fragment main. All right, so this contains a fragment, the fragment main. And associated with that fragment main, main activity fragment, there is an XML file, which is fragment main. So effectively, in the simple layout, uh, by simple I mean portrait mode, smaller screen, you're going to get your fragment, and the layout for the fragment is fragment main. So all the stuff that's in there. You'll see the text views, the image views, text views, linear layouts, buttons, buttons, and so on. That's all the part of the game. That's all effectively of this stuff that we're seeing here. All of this stuff from the questions down is in fragment main, XML. All right? And we know this in fragment main XML because if we look at the code for main fragment, that's the first thing it does is inflates fragment main. All right? So, Nice thing about this is, again, as far as putting a fragment within a layout, we can just drop that fragment on there and we get everything about it. We get the XML layout, excuse me, that's defined. <coughs> we get all the behaviors associated with it. So in our content main, we drop that main activity fragment. That main activity fragment has all this stuff in it, all the code in it. But the basic layout for it is coming
coming from, inflated from, that fragment main XML, which is this. Now, the second content main, remember we have two content mains, so our basic activities activity main is this screen that we're either going to put one fragment if it's in portrait mode, or if we're in landscape mode, we get two fragments side by side. Because if we look at this content main for landscape, there's two uh, fragments side by side. Now, each of those fragments have their own XML file associated with them. The one we saw before and the settings activity fragment we'll get to in a minute. All right. So, here we drop the fragment for the settings, here we drop the fragment for the game. So, think of a fragment as being like a panel, or we're dropping these two panels in side by side. It's not just a panel from the viewpoint of being uh, a user interface, it's a panel that contains functionality too, contains methods and, and everything about it. It's like a little mini activity. All right, uh, except the fragment fits inside an activity and we can, depending on the real estate, we can put several fragments in one activity, which we do in the case of having a big screen like this. Now, the other question of where does the activity setting come from? All right. The activity setting comes from here. The settings activity fragment is a special kind of fragment. All right. Notice that it's different than the main activity fragment. The main activity fragment is just a plain old fragment. So the plain old fragment, we have to specify the UI. We have to specify the XML file that the UI is on. With the settings activity fragment, we don't specify a UI. All right. Well, we sort of do, but we don't specify a layout XML file. We specify an XML file that contains the structure of our preferences. And that is this guy down here in our XML preferences. So this isn't exactly a UI, but the fragment, I'm sorry, the preference fragment can derive the UI from this guy. This guy specifies that our preferences, we have two preferences, two sets of preferences, I don't know what the right word would be, two preferences that we set. One of them is a list of how many guesses that the person has. That's a list preference, whereas the user can choose between one of several members of a list. Where do we get that from? We get it from the array string file, and the values are from the array guesses list. So if we look at our array file, guesses list, the values are 2, 4, 6, and 8. So that's what this one says, that our first preference is called number of choices, pref number of choices. And the options come from this array. All right, and we can pick one. From that XML description, this UI is generated. Uh, I can't zoom it anymore. But this UI is generated. The first option is number of choices. If I click on that number of choices, I get the list that I can select. Either two, oh, there we go. 
we can list two, four, or six. If I select region, I get the list of regions that also come from the array file, all right? In the array file, there's a list of regions. I don't know why they have two copies of it. That sounds wrong to me. Should be able to use the same thing twice. Uh, and anyhow, we say in the preferences XML that the next preference that we have is a multiple select. So the number of choices is mutually exclusive. We pick two, four, six, or eight. The regions, we could pick any different combination of regions. So we could pick, you know, all of them yes, all of them but one yes, only one yes, whatever. We can pick them in any combination. So that's where it comes from. It's sort of derived from the fact that this fragment is defined as a preference fragment. And with a preference fragment, you don't really define a UI. You define an XML file that contains the list of preferences. And the preference fragment sort of makes its own UI for it. So you kind of get it for free. All right? It happens as part of the framework. I imagine there's several different kinds of preferences. We've seen two of them, right? Where you choose one from a list or where you could choose multiple for a list. <clears throat> there's probably a preference where you can um, just type in something. Like, you know, maybe there's a preference for like what's your email address and you can type in just free text. So there might be. I, I don't know. We don't see one in this example, but it would seem reasonable that it would have that. Okay. Questions about that. Now remember, in landscape mode, our main activity is using, I'm sorry, in portrait mode, is using activity main and this content main, which means that we only have the one fragment, the game fragment. All right. Whereas in portrait, or talking backwards today, in landscape mode, we use this other one, and this other one has the two fragments side by side. So think of a fragment as like a little mini activity. We get a UI, and we get a functionality associated with it. And we can combine those and mix and match those any way we wanted to. There could be a case where we had, uh, let's say, a third uh, fragment. Maybe we have a leader's board, all right, that kept track of who got the best score in this game, all right. We could actually have it have several of these content mains. One of them showed all through, could show th all three fragments at the same time for a really big Android device. We could have one for a medium-sized device that showed the two fragments side by side and one for a small device that showed just uh, one activity at a time. Questions about this? So if we're in this mode, we're seeing both of the fragments at the same time and can interact with them both at the same time. Okay. If we're in this mode, though, portrait mode, we only see the main activity to start. And we have a menu option to go to the settings. How does it get that part? Well, let's, let's look at that part next. All right, good question. All right, let's look. So we look at the main activity.
thickness is not there. doesn't need to be there. Content main in the main activity fragment. Here's a UI for it. We have a linear layout with the text views and the image views and the buttons and all that. And the main activity Okay, menu is that is where we have the icon for it. Okay, because in drawable we have this guy, the vector for it, which is the little thing that looks like a gear. So that appears in the menu. All right. Here we go. Had me worried for a second there. We have this method here that says create options menu. We only need to see that gear if we're in portrait mode. Right? Because if we're in landscape mode, the settings are already there on the screen. So we look to see if we're in portrait mode. If we're in portrait mode, we inflate and we get that from that menu. Okay. So that's what determines whether we get that menu or not visible. Now what happens when we click it? When we click it on options item selected, Whenever we select a menu item, we only have one menu item, right? So if we click the menu, it's going to be this guy. We don't have to do any testing, right? That's the only thing in the menu, right? So if we clicked on the menu, what do we want to do? This is where we create a new intent, all right? Now, we talked about intents before when we did the Twitter application. An intent is effectively an intent to start a new activity. It is starting a new activity. Um, intent's kind of a funny word. Um, the idea is, is that you want to do something. And the Android operating system will control exactly what application will do that. So, for example, in the Twitter example, when we clicked on the link, we got sent to the web browser. So the intent was to open up this page. The activity that corresponds to it was opening up the web browser. So here, we're creating a preference, uh, an intent called preferences intent that we're handling ourselves, 
All right. This is different than what we did in the Twitter application because in the Twitter application, when we clicked on one of those, it fired up an intent for another application to handle it. Here, we're saying when we click this, this guy is taking over, this class. Settings activity is taking over. And we're starting that activity with this intent. All right, so let me put some breakpoints in here and we can follow through the debugging. I'll put a breakpoint here and a breakpoint here. deciding whether it wants to display the menu or not. It's looking at the orientation. <coughs> it's looking, is the orientation equal to orientation portrait? It is. Right? This is a constant. All right? Because an orientation of one means portrait. How many of you knew that? Not me. All right? But I know that in configuration there's a constant that corresponds to the orientation of being portrait. So since this is in portrait mode, it's going to go and inflate the menu and then the menu is going to appear. This is a good way uh, to understand what's going on in the code. It's running through the debugger. I mean, the debugger is there for you to figure out the problems that you have in your code. But the debugger can also sort of help you understand code that you're trying to understand. If I go and put this into landscape mode, all right, now the orientation already saw that case, so we'll resume program. Now if we rotate it, we're here. If I go step into, step out, okay. The orientation is false, or two, so this condition is false, so it's not going to inflate the menu. So that's how it determines whether it's going to inflate the, the menu or not. Okay? So let's go back to here. Oh, I probably need to tell it to continue. All right. Now when I click the gear, I made a selection on the menu. I selected something from the menu. Well, there's only one thing, right? There's only the settings on the menu. So I don't really have to test to see what we selected. I don't have to check to see what menu item we selected. I selected the settings. 
So therefore, I'm going to create a new intent, which is going to be to run the settings activity and to start that activity, all right, and then return. So resume, and we're in our settings activity. The settings activity, again, doesn't have a lot of code in it, all right? Because again, most of the stuff is by virtue of the fact that this layout contains the settings activity fragment, which is defined as a preference fragment. So a lot of that stuff gets done automatically for us. So the idea is kind of like this. On a big screen, that's wide, landscape mode, those activity, those fragments live side by side, and they both do their thing. In a smaller environment or a portrait environment, there's a menu option that takes you to a second activity that has a settings fragment in it. That there's two activities, each that have one fragment in it as opposed to one activity that has two fragments in it. Alright? So in landscape mode we don't need to switch activities because everything's all there. The two fragments are both there. In portrait mode, however, to get to that second fragment we have to open another activity and in doing so then that activity contains just the settings fragment. How does no, it get back? Good question. How does it get back? We simply have, pardon me? So orientation. To switch between landscape and portrait. No. How no. do we get from settings back to the application? Because it took us in the code to that fragment. But how does it get back once we make the selection? We click the back arrow. That's a built-in piece of functionality. Because activity one, uh, invoked activity number two. When activity two exits, we go back to activity one. Uh, there's a structure in, uh, in data structures called uh, stacks and queues. All right, I don't know if those ring a bell for you. Uh, if anything, they should ring a bell because of the famous website Stack Overflow, right? All right, That's, uh, Stack Overflow is an, is, a, is an error, all right, a certain kind of error. All right, a stack is a structure where the first thing in is, no, the last thing in is the first thing out. Uh, that's similar to the accounting concept of LIFO. All right, last in, first out. A queue is first in, first out. There's no, this isn't queues. This is much like function calls or subroutine calls. Maybe a little diagram would help. Real quick. You can think of a stack as being like, have you ever seen a cafeteria that has plates in like a cylinder? This is like a 2D cutaway. And usually there's like a spring-loaded thing here, right, on a spring. And if you put plates in, kind of exaggerating the drawing, you put plates in like that. So if I was putting the plates in, all right, let's say I was putting the plates in one at a time, all right. Putting a plate in is the equivalent of calling an activity. So I call an activity, that's the activity running at the top of the stack. It finishes, so it comes off of the stack, and the next one is now on top of the stack, and that will be the activity that's running. So let's say we add activity one, they're called activity two, they're called activity three. All right? So activity one is running. 
is on the bottom of the stack. Activity one calls activity two. Now activity two is on top of that. And activity three then gets called. When we go back from activity three, we're in activity two. When we go back from that, we're back in activity one. So that's kind of how it does. When we, that back arrow takes us back because it was called uh, and we have the toolbar on there and all that. And so that back arrow is there. All right. This is one of the big concepts, creating another activity versus having two fragments within a single activity. We mentioned a coins application that, that's out there. Let me go download that, and I'll try to run it. Is what an Android thing? The coin yep. We do that this year. Think so. Yeah, I've run it a couple of times. version I could be wrong. There you go. Oh, this is like
Did you just open it through Android Studio, or did you? I just opened it up in Android Studio. I didn't. Ha it just came up just like all the other apps do. Where'd you get it from? From the download from his. Who wrote this? Oh, you know what? This is a JSP file. Did and I pull the wrong have one? To so did I pull, because this is, I'm losing my mind here. It's a NetBeans app. a NetBeans app with a JSP page. Oh. Yeah, this is a web page. <laughs> I wonder if I screwed this up. Cause this is yeah this is a this is something I was working on with my Java 2 class in Android or uh, in Akron so let's see There it is. Oh, you know what I did? Oh. <laughs> I It's just a coincidence that these are called very similar oh, names. Okay. That was left over from what I was working on earlier today. Oh, okay. I teach too many classes. <laughs> and it's actually coins, not coins. running this. Oh, it hasn't finished. Okay, I have two coins, and I can flip them. Now, you can see how this somewhat correlates to the memory game. Not that you're going to, a, a two-card memory game would be pretty easy, right? Or it would be impossible, depending on which direction you went with them. But what I intended to show with this is, if we look here, in our resources, our layout, content main, contains a fragment, and I have one fragment that has two image views. Okay? And I set both of them equal to
here's what I did, and here's what I was attempting to show in this. So we can talk about this now, and then we can talk about this some next time. I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to do for class next time. It might be just sort of a workshop day. All right. But notice what I'm doing. I create an array list of coin objects. I have a coin object that has uh, a Boolean that says if it's heads. So I, I keep track of whether it's heads or tails. So if it's not true, then it's tails. I have a, uh, I randomly set that when I create the coin. The get image name simply displays whether it's heads or tails. All right. It displays the heads image or the tails image, depending on whether it's heads or tails. And the flip simply reverses it. So if it is true, it makes it false. If it's false, it makes it true. My main activity doesn't do much. It just contains a fragment. And my fragment has all the work in it. Now, one thing that I do is I actually create arrays here. All right, I inflate the layout. I create a array list of coins, and I create an array list of views. Okay, so my coins array list have two coin objects in it. My views have two image views in it. My views array list. All right. I can then set the image, 0, set the image 1, and then I have, I set the on-click listener of each view to be the same on-click listener. All right. I think that was sort of the point of this, because in your cards game, if you have 16 cards, you don't want to have 16 on-click listeners. You want to have one on-click listener that handles whatever card it is. So all of these get assigned the same click listener. And all my click listener does is tells it to go and flip that particular view. We find which view it is. And we flip the corresponding coin for that view, and then we set the image again. The part that I didn't get, if you can scroll up, it's where you are doing the uh, set image. Mm -hmm. Because in, in, in our case, for set image, we've got the card client. I mean, if we add the mm -hmm. card Well, remember, this is the same thing that we ran into in my blackjack example, right? Uh, there's two ways that you can make uh, an image. One is you can have it in assets and pull it in that way. The other way is you could have it as a resource and bring it in that way. Okay. So if you're not using the assets, if you're using that, you just do it the same way you did it in blackjack. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. That was what I we'll, was Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about this more uh on Thursday, I still haven't decided what, how we're going to handle that. All right. Uh, any questions? All right. Uh, we'll see you over in lab.